It's High School Sports Live tonight, high school wrestling. Join us for an historic evening in local broadcasting coverage. It's for the first time. We're televising live a regular season high school wrestling match. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Lower Dauphin High School. I'm John Reppitz of ABC 27, joined by George Hartwick, known to many as a Dauphin County Commissioner, but George certainly well known in wrestling circles. He was an All-American wrestler of Bloomsburg University and a veteran official with state championship experience. George, tonight we have Middletown at Lower Dauphin, two teams with with um, a rich tradition in wrestling, but they really haven't had a whole lot of success team-wise lately. But it's a new season, and they're backyard rivals, so we have all the makings of an exciting evening, don't we? Absolutely. It's um, uh, exciting. Central Pennsylvania wrestling live uh, to be able to broadcast something that uh, uh, exists uh, with a Middletown Lower Dolphin match, uh, one that um, has always provided a fair share of excitement. Uh, and recent history have went down to the wire to the very last match in criteria uh, one that's filled with passion these folks these kids have known each other since they've been young kids uh, now they're on the stage here um, uh, being able to prove themselves at the high school level uh, and although there uh, may be some issues with the overall team success tonight should prove to have some really really exciting individual matchups okay, some big changes in high school wrestling this year I guess the main one concerns weight classes for the viewers not well versed in it there's 14 weight classes in high school wrestling. The net of the whole thing is there is one less lower weight class, one more higher weight class. And a lot of people are upset about that. Why? Uh, it just changes the uh, tradition. Uh, obviously, their lower weight classes have been bumped up a little bit. Instead of 103 as your starting weight, we've got it 106. And the variances are not that much different. Uh, they're bumped up a little bit. But anytime you, you remove the tradition a little bit, uh, I guess there's a sense as to find out how it's all going to work out. And uh, the, you know, I, I had my first match as an official last night. It wasn't a whole lot of um, uh, controversy. And quite frankly, I think uh, to switch it up a little bit, up and uh, they have the ability for us to also have a little bit better weight control and maintenance. I think the idea of kids cutting down uh, so much to meet those weight classes, the health concerns that were associated with it, uh, and now the ability to actually match uh, where your natural weight is versus the weight that you're, you're wrestling is probably a lot more uh, healthy for kids as we move forward. So, okay. A couple other minor changes, one concerning the boundary line, another concerning some holds that were legal in the past will be illegal this year. We'll have more on that as we go throughout the evening. For those of you at home, you'll be happy to know that earlier this evening, both George and I did make our respective weights. George is 138. I'm 160. Well, that, that's not true. I think uh, yeah, as the right. new year comes around, I need to lose about 20 to get anywhere near the old weight class. Maybe back in the day, right? Absolutely. Anyway, we're ready. The teams are ready. We hope you are, too. Stay tuned. Lower Dauphin and Middletown coming your way right after this. Dr. Scott King from Arlington Orthopedics is one of the few area experts on hip injuries. His professional hockey career with the Detroit Red Wings is featured in this exclusive interview. Watch as Dr. King explains his own experience with a hip injury and how it helps him identify with his patients. Dr. King goes on to analyze the varying hip injuries that have plagued popular athletes like Bo Jackson, Chase Utley, and Alex Rodriguez. For the full interview, type in PASportsLiveTV.com. For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer, to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. Welcome back to Lower Dauphin, getting ready for high school wrestling action tonight on High School Sports Live. 
Lower Dauphin Falcons hosting the Middletown Blue Raiders. Getting ready here on the mat. And tonight we're going to start at 120 pounds. 120 pounds, a great matchup. Looks like Bryce Killian from the Middletown Blue Raiders versus Dalton Daimler. We're getting ready to move right into action. All the lights are off tonight with the only light over as a spotlight, and uh, it's time for action to begin. Let's get it on. Here we go. 120-pound match is underway. We've got the Killian in on a single leg. Scoots around for two. Two maintaining control on the top, bringing him back down on the mat. Off the mat, so we come back to the center. Killian with the early 2-0 lead. Dammer stands up, brought back down to the mat by Killian. He's maintaining control here. He's got a tight waist in, tight waist and a, a half on one side. Got a leg in, keeps his hips tight, looking to work a uh, cradle, out of bounds. Yeah, George, that was one of the things we mentioned in, in the open about the uh, the boundary line. You want to explain a little bit about the change there this year? Yeah, it, it, don't get it confused. It's not like college wrestling where you can wrestle the entire way on the out of bounds line. This year, the simple distinction is before when you stepped on the line uh, in a neutral position, you were considered out. Uh, now your, your feet need to be on the, the outside of that uh, two-inch white stripe uh, to be considered out. So before anything touched the line, you were declared out. Right now, you have to be behind the line. Okay, and we have an injury timeout. Looks like we've got blood time here. Blood time or with lowered often, as uh, fans may or may not know, you've got five minutes for blood time. Uh, once the uh, blood has been stopped, they stop the clock, uh, they start cleanup, and they try to bring them back as soon as possible to continue wrestling. Okay, and for those of you in the viewing audience who aren't quite familiar with all the rules of wrestling, 14 different weight classes, 14 matches. The winner gets a number of points ranging from three to six points, depending on how he wins that match. And then at the end of the night, you add up all the scores and top score wins. Right there was an escape by Dalton Daimler. Anytime you stand to your feet and you face your opponent and uh, you get to a neutral position, that's one. And then a takedown again by Bryce Killian. In nice and tight on a single leg. Now he's looking for a turn. He's trying to get him to expose his back. If you expose your back from a 45 degree angle, the referee will start to count. Two seconds earns you two points. Anything beyond that, and once you get to five, you earn three. Off the mat, so we'll come back to the center. Start again, 41 seconds remaining in the opening period at our 120 pound match this evening. It's Killian of Middletown leading Daimler by a score of four to one. Killian stayed in pretty good position here from the top. He's got his hips tight. He's looking for a tilt. Looking for a tilt. He's got a uh, arm bar in there. He's exposing him there. There's a count. He's earned at least two here. He's now earned three yeah, back three. points. He's trying to reposition, reposition to get on top uh, to attempt to pin and one of the things most audience members don't know, you have to be down for two seconds, two full seconds for a pin. It's gonna be beat the clock as we're coming down to the final five seconds of the opening period. He looks like he's gonna get away. Great fight by Dalton Daimler and Killian really takes a commanding lead here at the end of the first period. So three for that back move. So Killian's gonna take a seven to one lead into the second period. Looks like, again, we've got a bloody nose uh, for Killian. Uh, we'll be placed again on blood time. You touched on earlier about the spotlights. I think this is one of the great things about uh, some of these great venues for high school wrestling is uh, you don't really see this type of atmosphere for football or for basketball. But you, you get to darken the house, put the spotlight on the center of the mat, 
and, and give the guys center stage and let them go at it. You know, it's awesome. A sport that's an individual sport, there's no other place to hide. There's nobody you can point a finger at. Uh, it's ultimately up to your conditioning, how hard you're going to work uh, to be able to determine the outcome. Even for the official, there's no one else to look to out there. Uh, when you got the spotlight on you, you step up to the plate, and it can be extremely rewarding or humbling, depending upon your performance. Is the official going to be looking at you tonight uh, for some advice? I think uh, watching over his shoulder. My fellow officials are a little <laughs> nervous. They're they're thinking I'm going to critique them. I'm I'm, I'm hopefully going to be here to provide more support than criticism. <laughs> Hopefully, if there's any controversy, our replays will prove them correct. <laughs> well, I'll certainly give the appropriate opinion once I do the review. Second period underway. High school wrestling match made up of three two-minute periods. One escape for Killian. He started out from the bottom position. He's now faced the wrestler from Lower Dolphin, and he's earned one more point. Uh, we're at 8-1. to 8-1 to one off the mat, 145 to go here in the second period. As I said, as far as team scoring is concerned, you can get three, four, five, or six points depending on the, uh, the, the, the criteria. So right now, Killian with a 10 to one lead. Yeah, a nice be single leg. At He's now looking to work again, a tilt. He's got him exposed, uh, although it's not completely to the, to the angle he needs. Now it looks like we're gonna count back points. No, uh, not He's quite. only got a one count. He's only got a one count. Now he's earned two at least. Looks like he's earned three now, so we're uh, going to be at 13 to one at least. And we could be coming up on uh, technical fall range here, which would be uh, event, uh, winning by 15 points or more. That's correct. Uh, potentially dangerous there. You can't keep a leg in while you're in the standing position. Uh, the potential of somebody getting hurt or brought down hard is there, so the referee uh, appropriately called potentially dangerous. Minute four to go in the second period, 120 pound match. Middletown's Bryce Killian leading Lower Dolphins, Dalton Daimler 13 to one right now. He only needs uh, one more three point tilt to earn the technical fall, which would award him five team points. And it would end the match at that point. Looks like he's there to expose him. He's earned and the three, that's now that should be the end of the match. It's gonna be a technical fall in the books. First match of the night underway. We'll be back with more from Lower Dauphin right after this. You've seen a lot of my sons, Todd and Ryan, over the years on TV. In fact, we've all grown a lot during this time. We're all still here and stronger than ever. Now you can see me when you come into Hoffman Ford. And I won't be far behind. For 59 years, there's always been a Ford and a Hoffman in this showroom, delivering you the courtesy and respect that you deserve since 1953. Come see what keeps our customers coming back generation after generation. Hoffman Ford, Colonial Park. Back at Lower Dauphin, one match in the books, 13 more to go. That first match, Bryce Killian at Middletown with a technical fall over Dalton Daimler of Lower Dolphins. Now we move up to the 126 pound match. Killian's no stranger. I think he's had some brothers in Middletown in the past. Taking commanding five nothing lead is Middletown. This is the 126 pound match. Nick Kane from Middletown. He is taking on Dan Mumaw of Lower Dolphin. Kane in for a quick two. For those of you maybe unfamiliar with school colors, Lower Dauphin in the blue singlets tonight, Middletown in their traditional yellow singlets. That'll help you keep track of who's who on the mat. Hey, don't be confused, Blue Raiders. They're the yellow tonight. Top position, you see he's controlling his wrist. He's now working a tilt. He's got it good. He's got his hips tight underneath. He's trying to lift uh, the outside leg to put him in criteria. He still has a hold of it. Still looking to work a tilt here. He's got an option to run him right over the top of his head or, or to pull from the arm, which is now in between his crotch. He can do it either way. Now took the arm route, is attempted to put him into criteria. 
the bottom guy needs to continue to keep his head off the mat and try to work to get out or bottom guy could be called for stalling here. 45 seconds to go in the opening period. Kane on top in control, leading 2-0. Welcome back and start again. Middletown wrestlers have always been good from the top position, um, staying in tight, not uh, allowing much space, keeping hips on hips and wrist control. Uh, not a whole lot of room to get out. One of the keys from the bottom position is you need to create some space, try to move away and, and uh, face the other wrestler and put a couple moves together. And um, the Middletown wrestlers not given an opportunity to create that kind of space. Pulling him back in. 10 seconds remaining. So it looks like Nick Kane's going to take a 2 nothing advantage into his second period with Dan Mumon. Second period underway at 126 pounds. Now introducing the third member of our broadcast team, Todd McCall, with the winner of tonight's opening match. Todd? Guys, I'm here with Bryce Killian. Bryce, you really worked hard on that match. What were you going to have to continue to do to keep the Blue Raiders on top? Uh, we got to continue working hard and uh, keep fighting through, get bonus points mainly because we have some forfeits that we have to cover, but we should be good if we keep doing what we're doing. As far as your shape coming in this match, and, and actually another question really, you showed that you're in shape, but really quickly, what is it like to, uh, to wrestle for TV? Uh, I mean, it's, it's different. I've never done it before, but I mean, it's, it's cool. I hope we keep doing it over the years and stuff, so I keep having more times like this. Well, I'm here with Bryce Killian, and Bryce, we wish you the best of luck on your season. Thanks. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Todd. Second period underway in the 126-pound match. It's Middletown's Nick Kane still enjoying his 2-0 lead over Dan Muma of Lower Dauphin. We've got Green still in control. Green still in control. Green still in control. Boy, it's great tonight yeah. to be able to get uh, some of the wrestlers. Really There's some two reversal, two reversal. He's got a cradle. He's bringing him back in the near fall position. It looks like he's got it locked up very tight. He's got the head in the temple and the knee in the side. He's attempting to pull both shoulder blades down for a pin and good fight off his back from the lower dolphin wrestler. That's going to be three more points for Nick Kane. Got so it. that's going to up his advantage to seven to nothing now as we approach the 30 second mark in the second period. But to giving exposure to kids in central Pennsylvania who have really put themselves on the mat wrestling wise. And uh, the great wrestling fans and community, we're hoping to bring some really exciting live matches to Central Pennsylvania to even create a bigger buzz about an already big sport. 18 seconds left in the second period. And we'll start it one more time from the center. No change. We've got 10 seconds to go. 7-0 lead for Nicholas Kane. Dan Mumal is going to attempt to escape. It looks like we've again got, we've got uh, an injury time. George, earlier you were mentioning about green in control. And, and, and if, if you look at the official, he has a, a green wristband and a red wristband. How does that correspond to the wrestlers? Normally the home team is recognized by the green wristband. Um, the away team normally by a red wristband. And um, based upon um, the, those two wristbands, you give an award points. Uh, the home team awards two points. You'll see him raise the green wristband or, or whatever the, the, the awarding of the points are. Here's this last move by Nick Kane. He's got a tight cradle in there. He's got it uh, 
Very tight, as you see, he wants to position it by putting the knee in the side, head in the temple, trying to spread him closer and closer in order to uh, earn the pin. Two seconds on his back is what it would take. Bottom guy tried to create space, work away, and, and uh, clearly got off his back. Good fight. Okay, we're back to action. The final 10 seconds of the second period at 126 pounds. There's an escape from one Wall. escape point there. That's always frustrating as a coach when you see a wrestler keeping control for the entire period and give up something right at the buzzer there. Could make a difference in the team score. In the last few seconds, Muma gets his first point. So he's going to go into the third period. Wrestlers chose neutral. We're on our feet. Kane is in on a single leg. Now uh, Muma sprawling from Lower Dolphin. He's back in now. Uh-oh, there goes takedown Mumal. Just like that, it's now a seven to four match. They said that point at the end of the period could have been significant, a little bit of a momentum changer. Now he, he lets him up, he's feeling confident on his feet. One escape. He wants to try to earn another takedown here. However, Kane from Middletown again in on a double leg. He's not in great position. He's got his head on the mat. He needs to try to work up, try to work work out. If you've got your head on the mat, it's going to be a long day for you out there. Looks like this might end up in a stalemate position here. Not a whole lot of movement. Spoken like a true official. As soon as you said it, he blows the whistle. <laughs> Under a minute to go, 126-pound match. Only four points separating, and early in the season, when you get to the third period, you know, you test your uh, how in shape you are, your your lungs, and uh, this is where it starts to get tight, and you judge how hard you need to work in order to finish out a match. It's so critical to be able to finish out a match. And uh, the more he's struggling there with the double legs, the more energy it takes, and late in the third period, it might put you in a difficult spot. Mumal from Lower Dolphin is in on a single leg. 30 he's seconds to come to out go. the backside. He's looking to come out the backside. He's got, got a double leg. It's, they're in what's called a funk. That's two for Lower Dolphin. It's now 8-6. Two for Lower Dolphin. 15 seconds to go. He's working hard. It looks like he's trying to really make an attempt to do it down the stretch, but time may be against him. He gives him one escape. Now he's going to attempt to try to work another quick takedown. Unfortunately, it was out of time, but a great effort put on at the end of the match by Dan Mumal. However, Nicholas Kane comes up with an 11 6 victory for Middletown. 11 6 at 126. We'll be back with more wrestling action from Lower Dauphin right after this. Dr. Scott King from Arlington Orthopedics is one of the few area experts on hip injuries. His professional hockey career with the Detroit Red Wings is featured in this exclusive interview. Watch as Dr. King explains his own experience with a hip injury and how it helps him identify with his patients. Dr. King goes on to analyze the varying hip injuries that have plagued popular athletes like Bo Jackson, Chase Utley, and Alex Rodriguez. For the full interview, type in PASportsLiveTV.com. Back at Lower Dauphin, two matches down. As we get ready for the 132 pound match now. Eight nothing hey, team lead Nicholas for the Middletown Blue Raiders. Raiders. Two matches up, hey, we've had a technical a fall and a, uh, a, a decision. And then he had a little bit of a momentum change. So 132 pounds for Middletown in the yellow. It's going to be Jason Mumal, Hardison. And for Lower Dauphin in the blue singlet, it is and Lee Castle. First, you know, after the first period. First period. Those of you who know and Lower Dauphin wrestling, the Castle name has been around for decades. decades. Uh, You're a junior. Uh, with you a, um, uh, a great head coach and a number of uh, wrestlers that have uh, come down the line here at Lower Dauphin. Uh, and uh, makes it to see how young Lee Castle is going to be able to do this evening. Right in the open, we touched upon the, the, the rich wrestling tradition at both of these schools, and certainly the Castle name 
at the very forefront of the tradition here at Lower Dolphin. Cleon Castle, a longtime coach here at Lower Dolphin, and uh, somebody who's brought a great deal of recognition and a quality program that uh, continues to be a quality program here at Lower Dolphin. We're still scoreless as we uh, approach the halfway point of the first oh, period. Headlock. The headlock, he's got it in there tight. Looks like it's above the elbow legal. Lee Castle has got it. The um, young man, Jason Hardison, in a whole load of trouble here early. With a lot of time to go in the first period. He's attempting to keep his hips away, pull his head up, and uh, don't let this legal hold turn into an illegal hold. He's readjusting at the top, and that is tight, ladies and gentlemen. That's a tight hold. He's got it, uh, both arms included. That has got to be excruciating when you're on the bottom on one like this. It is. It's not a position you want to find yourself in, and, uh, and he's especially still, early. It's going to take a lot out of him. 25 seconds to go if he can ride this out. He's going to, it he, looks like he's working oh, it hard. He bridges up. Working it really hard. What he needs to do is sit out and lift his head up to try to get both of the shoulders down. 10 seconds. A lot of credit goes to Hardison from Middletown. That's a very good fight. He did not give up. We'll see what kind of toll that takes in the rest of the match here. So Lee Castle with five points there in the first period. It's now on top 5 nothing over Jason Hardison. Now let's go back to Todd McCall with the winner of our 126 pound match. Todd? I'm standing alongside Nicholas Kane, the 126 winner. Nicholas, you, you built an early lead and then there was a momentum. Moomaw got a little bit of a momentum change on you. What did you have to do to come away with this match? I just had to uh, keep my composure and, you know, uh, stay, uh, have the mindset that I can win. That's about it. Uh, going into division, you know, continue uh, to, to get Middletown where they've always been. What do you and your teammates have to do? Uh, I think we just got to you know, practice a little harder and uh, hydrate before the match so we're not dead. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, we wish you the best, Nicholas Kane. Thank you. All right, Nicholas has two more years, guys, to fight, and he's a gritty guy. Back to you guys. Thanks, Todd. One minute, 20 seconds left in the second period at 132 pounds. Jason Hardison of Middletown on the short end of a 5-0 score, trailing Lee Castle of Lower Dauphin. Actually, it looks like Castle is also trying to reach back again for that headlock. He needs to create a little space. He's trying to get his hips away to face the wrestler. Castle is facing Hardison right now. If he continues to move through here, he's going to earn two. If he just keeps it there level, it's going to be a one escape, and he's earned one escape. So that will up the advantage to six to nothing. 40 seconds left in the second period. 132 pounds. Middletown leading overall eight to nothing. Twenty seconds left. Facing each other. Doesn't look like either wrestler has an advantage. Although now you don't want to ever be on your butt. It looks like Castle may be working hard to uh, earn two here at the end of the period. Looks like he's going to run out of time. Two periods in the books. There we go. It uh, appears that Castle has a, um, a great headlock. He's keeping it, as you can see there, demonstrated. You need to stay above the elbow to keep it legal. And uh, he needs to spend less time looking at the official, more time trying to squeeze. Third period underway. Lee Castle lower Dauphin with a 6-0 lead over Jason Hardison of Middletown. He's got a cross face in. He's looking to work for a cradle. Cross face cradle, he's trying to run the head to the knee. 
in an attempt to lock it up here and then take him back to earn uh, near fall criteria. It's like he's working it up front. I think he's got it locked up now. It's a matter of figuring out a way he can angle himself to take him back over in, in order to earn the, uh, the points. He may be too far out front right now. He needs to settle himself back a little bit in order to try to, um, to turn him over. Now he's lost it. Bottom guy just hanging onto that top leg, head down. He needs to get his head off the mat and wrestle. Again, working a cross face cradle, attempting to bring the head to the knee, trying to work again for criteria. Bottom guy needs to continue to wrestle. 40 seconds to go. He's trying to now, oh, it's potentially dangerous. Bottom wrestler needs to get his head off the mat. I wouldn't uh, doubt that the official is close to calling uh, Jason Hardison for stalling. Again, you need to continue to work the action. You have your head on the mat. You can't do anything from that position. He's trying to stop him from earning a major decision here. 22 seconds left. An escape by Hardison. Makes it six to one. They're squared up. And that is just going to about do it at 132 pounds. It's going to be Lee Castle of Lower Dauphin. Decisioning Jason Hardison of Middletown. We'll be back with more from Lower Dauphin High School right after this. Knoll Insurance located at 704 Bridge Street in New Cumberland. They offer property, casualty, auto, homeowners, health, and life insurance. Knoll Insurance also offers notary services. Call Knoll Insurance today at 774-8128. Foreman and Bab Certified Public Accountants is a full-service accounting tax and consulting firm with over 17 years experience serving the central Pennsylvania region. From taxes to payroll, from corporate accounting to business consulting, let Foreman and Bab help you achieve your financial success. Three matches down, Middletown enjoying a team lead of 8-3 over Lower Dauphin as we now move on to our 138-pound match this evening. You joked earlier this was my old weight. <laughs> I haven't seen 138 in probably about 20 years. Uh, it's been a lot longer <laughs> for me, I, I tell you. I'm glad you're talking about what weight you used to wrestle at because I'm not telling you what I would have been at or what I'm at now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 20 pounds for a New Year's resolution. So at 138, it's going to be Seth Matinchak from Middletown taking on Tyler Messick of Lower Dauphin. A little frisky earlier. They're squaring each other up. Both guys looking to be fresh and aggressive. Good head position. They need to stop it after the whistle. Nothing unnecessary after the whistle. Trying to work hand control, staying in good position. A lot of wrestling, the higher level you get, the, the more important it is to simplify it. You gotta keep yourself in good position, work angles. Don't ever put yourself in a bad position to be taken down. Square them up, head up. Looks like two guys who are solid here, uh, competitively matched. Almost a minute gone here, we're 0-0. Zero, zero. Middletown wrestlers backing up. Again, if you're just joining us, that's Middletown in the yellow singlets tonight, Lower Dauphin in the blue. Seth Matinchak for Middletown, Tyler Messick of Lower Dauphin. We're scoreless as we are under a minute to go in first period at 138 pounds tonight. 
Guys showing a lot of respect for each other, trying to control the hands on the inside. That's a great high crotch. He didn't finish, he stopped on the way around. Allowed Messick to square his hips up, sprawl away, and now he's got a cross face in, trying to scoot around the side. And he did it successfully. Two points for Tyler Messick. So Messick grabs a two nothing lead as we're in the final 20 seconds of the first period. doing anything but burying his hips, trying to maintain control. Clock is winding down, one. So it's Tyler Messick of Lower Dauphin with a two nothing lead over Seth Matinchak of Middletown after one period. It, it, at the uh, beginning of the second and third period, there's a, a uh, decision made between odd and even depending upon who has the choice. They're given an opportunity to make that choice. As we're getting ready to start our second period, Todd McCall has the winner at 132 pounds. Todd. Gentlemen, I'm here with Lee Castle. Lee, uh, you went to 132. What did you have to do to really put your team on the board there? Well, I had to stop all of his offensive shots, and I had to score when I needed to put my team on the board. Lee, one of the impressive things here is uh, very impressive. You're a freshman. If I was to ask you one word, that will be your goal through the next four seasons at Lower Dolphin. What will that one word be, if you could sum it up in one word? Be a state qualifier. Be a state qualifier. Guys, this guy's serious and ready. I like what I heard. We wish you the best, Lee. Yeah, thank you. Back to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Todd. Second period underway. Tyler Messick leading Seth Matinchak. Nice way to uh, move out and uh, face in for a one escape by Tyler Messick. Again, trying to work hard. He's in on a single leg. He's in on a single leg, trying to earn a point right near the edge of the mat. He's got one. He's attempting to pull him back in and gather the second leg. I think he's done it successfully there. That's a great execution. He's got five, nothing Tyler Messick from Lower Dolphin. Looks like Tyler Messick's gaining some momentum and a belief that he's gonna be able to take him down. He, chooses the ability to be neutral and earn and, and to give up one point to Seth Matinchek. This is part of the trade-off here. You give up one with the hopes of getting two or more. That's correct. And uh, when you feel confident on your feet and you have the ability to take them down, you can really control the flow and the momentum of the match. And um, it looks like um, Tyler Messick is uh, gaining that level of momentum right now and taking, uh, taking down Seth Matinchek at will. And there, just what you were saying, he gives up one, but comes back with the takedown and gets two. So now he now leads it uh, by a score of seven to one. Yep, I wouldn't doubt that you'd continue to see that. He's doing it again. Um, if you have confidence on your feet, you really it's going to be difficult to beat you. Uh, anybody who's really good on their feet and able to take the other wrestler down uh, will score a lot of points and score them quick. He's earned another two. Two more. So it's now nine to two. In favor of Tyler Messick over Seth Matinchak. He's again going neutral, um, an attempt to uh, continue to run up the score. Two for one game and he'll look for some bonus points attempting to get back points. If he's able to do that from the feet as well. He's got a lot of confidence. He's now trying to work an inside tie with wrist control. Going to fend off a shot by Seth Matinchek, a reshot. Don't stop until the whistle blows. As a coach, you go crazy when you see your guy stop there. You give up something cheap right at the edge. Three seconds. And that's going to do it for two periods in our 138 pound match tonight. Tyler Messick of Lower Dauphin leading. Seth Matinchak of Middletown by a score of nine to three. Tyler once again giving up a point to go neutral in an attempt to, to gain two or other bonus points. As you can see he's moving forward, staying in good position. He's trying to move the head, trying to get the other guy moving. Seth Matinchak's back up, he's got a double leg, he's got to bring him down easy. 
Earning another two points with a nice takedown. Got Tyler Messick in clear control of this match at 138. Again, giving up one point to escape and attempt to try to earn two. Staying in good position, keeping his head up, pursuing, attempting to try to work an inside tie. Again, continuing to move forward, continuing to move forward in on a single leg. Messick with a six point lead. I guess Key now try to get to that eight point margin so he can get a major decision in 14 points. It's, uh, it's, it's a game now to try to earn bonus points. Both wrestlers need to work towards the center and continue to work. Just under 45 seconds to go in our 138 pound match. Tyler Messick in control, 11 to five over Seth Matinchek of Middletown. It's uh, early season matches really start to test your lungs and see how in shape you are to try to get these bonus points. Hopefully by mid-season he'll continue to fire off, but he's back in on a single leg. Not in a great position here, but still may earn the two. He's got to collect the second leg, stay in bounds, keep his knees Pull in bounds, in. looking to collect the second leg. Up, he, he took his inside leg and went out of bounds and came back in and the referee made the appropriate call. He was out of bounds without control. 15 seconds to go. Good job. He's trying to work around. This is a critical takedown here. Five, four, three. He's earned it. He's got it. There you go. There's bonus points. That's a way to work through it. So Tyler Messick is going to get a major decision over Seth Matinchek at 138 pounds. We'll be back with more wrestling from Lower Dauphin High School right after this. For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. Now he bumped things up to 145 pounds. As we see team score, 8-7. Can't get much closer than that. Uh, town, two victories for Lower Dolphin. Um, backyard rivalry, uh, no different from um, years past. And uh, close match here uh, after four. So at 145, as you just heard, Seth Babel of Middletown taking on J.T. Donnelly of Lower Dauphin. First period underway. First of three two-minute periods. Six minutes doesn't seem long from the outside, but when you're out there, it goes a whole lot longer, especially early in the season. But most of these kids wrestle year-round trying to stay in shape. It's a sport uh, where conditioning is king. Early in the season, George, I assume these guys are in good shape, but will they get in better wrestling shape as the season goes along? Uh, let's hope so. And the key is you want to earn, uh, and, and we used to try to work on long-term, um, uh, the, the running long, trying to get to yourself into marathon-type shape. And as you go longer in the season, you try to work more towards sprints to get that pop and really um, a peak at the right time. You can't wear your body out through the entire season and you want to progressively get better and in, in, in better shape. Under a minute to go in the opening period, Seth Babel of Middletown enjoying a four nothing lead now. And a nice takedown and exposed him to back points right away. Now he's working a half, uh, attempting to uh, work a half on one side. He's got the arm on a one on one on the other side. He's trying to use his own head to push him down. Now he's uh, uh, both underneath both arms. He's now working a half from the other side. Looks like he's got it in there deep. 
He's attempting to drive. You've got to be careful. You don't want to put both of them in on the same time. That's an illegal hold. But um, he's going from side to side in an attempt to earn a near fall. Closing seconds of the opening period at 145. Seth Babel of Middletown. With a 4-0 lead over JT Donnelly of Lower Dauphin. Here's another look at the uh, takedown that Babel had on Donnelly. Yep. Double leg right into uh, back near four near fall points. And second period underway. We Babel, four Seth, nothing. Yeah, Seth Babel chose neutral to begin the second period. Seth Babel trying to work a double leg. TJ Donnelly, he's looking like he's trying to get around. He's getting underneath the arms. He's close to earning two. He's trying to clear himself away and earn two here. Seth Babel still holding on. He's got to get his head off the mat and try to square up. Still hanging on. We're still neutral, we're still neutral. It's uh, gonna be a stalemate. Let's go to Todd McCall with our winner at 138 pounds. Todd. Gentlemen, I'm with Tyler Messick. Tyler, one of the things you really out physical won your match. What is the forecast for you personally this year? Just move, it's all about moving in this sport. You just gotta keep on going, get your Hit your two and just keep on going. Let him go. Keep on getting your two. And just overwork him. That's basically what I do. At one point, it uh, looked like you might be able to put him on his back, your opponent on his back. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking at that particular moment? I don't know. I just thought I had to keep on going. I, I had no gas left, but I, I just knew I had to keep on going for the team. We need this one. All right. I understand. As Tyler said, he needs a win. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Todd. George, as you were saying, uh, six minutes doesn't seem like much, but Tyler Messick right there just said he, he was out of gas. Well, hopefully um, uh, the coach from Lower Dolphin is going to make sure he's in a position <laughs> to refuel that tank later in the season to be able to finish him off because I'm sure they could use the bonus points. Closing seconds of the second period at 145 pounds. T.J. Donnelly of Lower Dauphin starting in the control position over Seth Babel. Running out of time here in the second period. But Seth Babel looks like he's going to maintain a two-point lead. Tight match, four to two, favor of Babel over Donnelly as we head to the third period. TJ Donnelly selects neutral, four to two. He earns a takedown, he'll even this up. Both guys seeming to feel confident from their feet. Need to continue to work towards the center. You can't back up like that the entire match. If um, the Middletown wrestler continues to back up, I suspect that our official is going to hit him for stalling. You've got to continue to wrestle and move forward. Holding a lead, you can't continue to hold a guy off and uh, try to protect that lead. You can have to continue to wrestle. Coming up a minute 20 to go. got his head on the mat. He's attempting to try to block him off and spin around, trying to high leg over. He needs to do a better job of blocking the head and getting underneath the arm. He's trying to hook the back leg unsuccessfully. And then almost gave up to himself. 51 seconds to go. Still a four to two match. Could go down to the stretch here. We've got TJ Donnelly now being the pursuing wrestler. 
Got Seth Babel backing up still. However, you know, you need to continue to promote the action. Just pushing doesn't work. You need to take shots. You need to work towards a takedown. I think that's the challenge here. Uh, 20 the, seconds. The Middletown wrestler may be backing up. The uh, lower Dolphin wrestler is not trying to put anything formally together. Just under 16 seconds to go, 145 pounds, still a close match. One move could decide this one. It's 4-2 as we head into the final 10 seconds. Middletown still backing up. Crowd's getting a little anxious. And that's going to do like it. He's going to do just enough. Seth Babel of Middletown, the winner at 145. We'll be back with more wrestling action from Lower Dauphin High School right after this. When my dad opened Hoffman Ford in 1953, this was the model that you could drive out of the showroom. In the past 59 years, yes, things have changed, but one thing still remains the same. There's always been a Ford and a Hoffman in our showroom. Through three generations, the Hoffman Ford family has believed in always treating their customers with the courtesy and respect that they deserve. Passed on from our grandfather to our father and now to us, we believe these values will bring another 59 years of success. Bigger selection, better deals, Hoffman Ford. Welcome back, Lower Dauphin High School. First ever regular season wrestling match televised live in the Mid-State area. ABC 27.3. Like to thank all the sponsors that have made this possible tonight. Uh, Arlington Orthopedics. Uh, we've got uh, United Concordia, Dauphin County Commissioner, the Hummelstown Sun. Uh, wrestling is huge in central Pennsylvania. And the opportunity to provide exposure to these kids, to do it live to an excitable wrestling community in central Pennsylvania. I think this is a kickoff of something special that we're going to see continue to grow. Aaron Gordon of Lower Dauphin at 152 pounds. Taking on Andania Bennett of Middletown. Minute 15 left in a scoreless first period. minute going by in the first period. It, uh, not a whole lot of action yet so far. Both wrestlers trying to feel each other out. Not a whole lot can happen in from that position. They need to free themselves up and attempt to uh, get some space, work an angle, work in a front headlock here. Aaron Gordon's trying to work a front headlock. Double leg by Bennett. Really nice double leg by Bennett. He drove right through the body and earned two points. Middletown up 2-0, 28 seconds. Trying to work a one-on-one -on -one here. Very close to locked hands. Trying to collect, continue to establish wrist control. Work to the side, attempting to get a turn. Five. So after two minutes, it's Andania Bennett of Middletown with a two nothing lead over Aaron Gordon of Lower Dauphin. We've got a blood time on Bennett from Middletown. Let's take another look at that uh, takedown by Bennett. See the key is he's gathered the two up and it continues to drive. Shoulder in, moving forward driving uh, the lower dolphin wrestler directly down and earning two points. Okay, just to update you, this match is 2-0, but overall it's Middletown on top of lower dolphin after five matches by his team score of 11-7. to 
Todd has our winner at 145 pounds. So let's go to Todd right now, Todd. Seth, uh, that was an absolutely gritty victory. What did you have to do to hold on there? Um, we just had to, had to be well conditioned, make sure I was in shape for the match. And luckily I was to last all three rounds. Can I ask you about your focus there? The momentum seemed to change 4-2 and you gritted down. Is there anything special you did? Um, just listen to my coaches. We have good coaching and just had to listen to them. They would help me through the win, which they did. All right, guys, you heard it. Coaching uh, has a lot to do with it. Seth uh, really battled down to get that one. Uh, back to you gentlemen at the desk. Yeah, it's always good to let the coaches uh, have the recognition, right? Second period underway at 152 pounds, and Donia Bennett leading Aaron Gordon of Lower Dauphin by a score of 2-0. They go off the mat. We'll start back again from the center. Got to work to bring him back down on the mat. If he does not work to bring him back down, he let him go. He obviously earned one point. Bennett from Middletown faced him. Now we're going to attempt to to earn a takedown. George, just touch upon the the, the boundary line. You were saying that if you're on the line, you are still in. That's correct. Okay. Um, Previous uh, to this year, the two-inch line that you see going around the outside of the mat, if, um, if your, your foot touched there, you were considered out of bounds. Now you need to have your foot behind the line. On the line still is in bounds. But yet sometimes you will see one wrestler outside to the other inside. So why is that still considered in? Uh, because you need to have supporting points in bounds. Uh, and, and if you do, one wrestler can be completely in bounds. The other wrestler can be out of bounds. They can work back towards the middle. So it's, the not, it's not like other sports where if you step on the line or you step over the line, it's out. You, it, it, it's the referee's decision. Well, no, the, you have to have supporting points from points the, the wrestler. Uh, who's attempting to earn the takedown inside. If the if the individual who ha has you in a takedown position is in bounds, he's able to finish as long as his supporting points stay in bounds, it will be awarded two. Okay. Just because one's out doesn't mean they're both out. Under 30 seconds to go in the second period at 152 pounds. Donia Bennett has now stretched his lead. It's now 5-0 over Aaron Gordon of Lower Dauphin. Still maintaining control of Donia Bennett. 5 nothing at the end of the second period. Our next high school sports live broadcast is actually going to be basketball. It's going to be next Wednesday as the Hershey Trojans will travel to Cedar Cliff to take on the Colts in a big mid-pen keystone matchup. That'll be coming from Cedar Cliff High School next Wednesday night. Single game action beginning at 7.30. Back here at Lower Dauphin, it's the Middletown Blue Raiders leading the Lower Dauphin Falcons on the scoreboard overall by a score of 11 to 7. As we do battle at 152 pounds, we're in the third period. Middletown's Andonia Bennett with a 5-0 lead over Aaron Gordon at 152. Okay, let's go to Todd who's uh, with our uh, basketball expert, Charlie Fortney. Todd? High School Sports Live. And Charlie, for three years now, you guys have covered basketball. But tonight, we're here in Lower Dauphin, and we're covering wrestling. Can you talk about a little bit about the mindset of yourself and your staff to get this thing underway tonight? Well, wrestling in uh, Pennsylvania, and especially Central Pennsylvania, with the, with the success that Central Dolphins had nationally and whatnot, and a lot of our wrestlers that have gone on to be ranked in the country in college. I mean, uh, the wrestling in Pennsylvania is the best in the country, and we need to exploit that. And there's another reason. I have a seven-year-old who loves wrestling, 
and he tells me uh, over the last two years, Daddy, why aren't you guys doing wrestling? So, um, so there, there's another motivating factor. And, you know, continuing, you know, three years and now our first wrestling match, and, and really uh, it's just exciting to see the crowd out here tonight. What is your forecast for the future for, you know, coaches and players to get more involved and more sports to be involved in this thing? Well, actually, we have planned for 2012, 2013, a full wrestling slate of eight to ten matches, including some, uh, some possible championships. And we also have on the docket to do swimming championships. Um, naturally, it's hard to do a regular swimming event, but to do swimming championships. And we've already had tremendous sponsorship uh -oh, support here we go. asking for appears that uh, Aaron Gordon football has uh, to be got on the 2012-2013 schedule. So there's a bright future ahead for high school sports line. Well, as you can hear, Charlie, the excitement. <laughs> We're going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks. We've got some excitement here tonight. We're very happy. Charlie Fortney, High School Sports Live Director. Things have changed quickly as we're coming down to the closing seconds at 152. Aaron Gordon is going to come up just short in his battle with Andonia Bennett. We'll recap this when we come back here to Lower Dauphin with more high school wrestling right after this. Dr. Scott King from Arlington Orthopedics is one of the few area experts on hip injuries. His professional hockey career with the Detroit Red Wings is featured in this exclusive interview. Watch as Dr. King explains his own experience with a hip injury and how it helps him identify with his patients. Dr. King goes on to analyze the varying hip injuries that have plagued popular athletes like Bo Jackson, Chase Utley, and Alex Rodriguez. For the full interview, type in PASportsLiveTV.com. Okay, in that last match at 152 pounds, Andonia Bennett of Middletown had things under control, but Aaron Gordon, Lower Dauphin, made it interesting there at the finish, but Bennett hangs on for a 7-6 win. So that now ups Middletown's advantage to 14-7 overall on the scoreboard. Action underway at 160 pounds now. Fast and furious, five points scored already in the opening seconds. Troy Spencer for Lower Dolphin. And uh, Michael, I believe Michael Kane. It's Michael Simmons of Middletown. Michael Simmons. And it's Simmons with a 5 0 lead after one minute of the opening period. now 5-1, Simmons leading Troy Spencer. Simmons in on a single, not very tight. Spencer defending. Sprawling. He's looking to try to get a double leg as he's moving in. Not in a great position. This is probably going to end up in a stalemate. Not a whole lot of movement either way. So after a fast and furious uh, 15 seconds, things kind of settled down there for the last minute 45 of the opening period. 
But it's Michael Simmons of Middletown with a 5-1 lead over Troy Spencer of Lower Dauphin. Middletown in the team score, leading the Falcons by a score of 14-7 as the second period at 160 is underway. Spencer allowing Simmons to stand and face him to earn one to make it 6-1. to one. Michael Simmons. Okay, let's go back over to Todd McCall with our winner of that exciting 152-pound match. Todd? I hear with Andy and I, Bennett, and I tell you what, you really gritted down to get that match. Yeah. Can but, you just talk a little bit about yeah. what you did there? Well, when when I, when I first stepped out on the mat, I underestimated him. I got to give him that. I underestimated him. But when I was stepping out here, cutting from 160 to 45, I really have no energy. And we also have Beast coming up this weekend, so I really had no energy. But, yeah, that, that was a hard match. I gave it all I had, and I came out with the win. I got to thank Middletown for that. They have good conditioning. Well, you, you guys are in a great, great conference, great division. Yeah. What's one thing you can take from that match for yourself personally into the division? Well, the, the first thing I got to do, I got to work on my headlock defense. The second time I got headlocked, but that time for sure I was not getting pinned. But I'm going to work on that. I got to work on moves on top too. Okay, it was nice meeting you, sir. You too. Thank you. Best to you. What a gentleman, guys. I got to bring it back to you. i uh, tell you what, it's very tough to admit some of your failures, but that guy's a winner in my book. Okay, thanks, Todd. 160 pounds. Michael Simmons of Middletown has upped his advantage over Troy Spencer of Lower Dauphin. It's now 8 to 1. So you have about 47 seconds to go in the second period. Simmons has not put himself in a bad position the entire match, holding a commanding 8 to 1 lead with about 45 seconds in the second period. Attempting now at this point to try to earn some bonus points for Middletown. And uh, speaking of Middletown, uh, uh, Coach Mike Nauman, um, some of you may know his son, Tyler Nauman, an outstanding uh, state champion wrestler here in Pennsylvania, also uh, an All-American at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. Um, great wrestling family. Uh, he's a hard-driving coach, someone who uh, is always constantly uh, uh, trying to increase the level of competition for his wrestlers and have brought Middletown wrestling, really, and put them on a map with uh, a lot of state qualifiers and district champions. Uh, he deserves a great deal of credit uh, in trying to create a program in Middletown that I know uh, all the folks in Middletown are proud of. 12 seconds to go in the second period. It's eight to two now. Simmons leading Spencer. I know Coach Nauman is, is really looking forward to uh, trying to push uh, the wrestlers this week. As you heard, uh, their Middletown wrestlers are heading up to the Beast of the East, which is a big tournament coming up over the weekend. Showing Michael Simmons there, uh, working on a takedown, earning bonus points, taking uh, Troy directly to his back uh, for a five-point move there. Stay tuned after uh, the final match is over. Stay tuned for the United Concordia Dental Post Game Report. It's coming up uh, after the action is completed on the mat later this evening. Troy Spencer continue to work in it. And if friend us on Facebook, you could also vote for our wrestler of the match, our Hoffman Ford wrestler of the match. That announcement will also be coming up a little bit later on this evening. 8-3, Simmons leading Spencer. Minute and a half to go at 160 pounds. Troy Spencer is uh, appearing to still have a lot in the tank, attempting to not only stave it off, but uh, to earn a takedown here. Eight three, and it uh, appears that uh, Michael Simmons is calling for injury time here for folks at home that don't know. Um, you are allowed to take an injury timeout uh, if you're injured. Uh, you've got a minute and 30 seconds uh, in an injury timeout. Uh, you take the first injury timeout. Um, you can stop the clock if you take a second injury timeout. Uh, you uh, give up the ability to um, uh, to have position. The the wrestler 
Uh, the other wrestler actually will earn the opportunity to choose what position you come back in, which could be a huge advantage. So they really tried to discourage folks from taking injury timeouts. Uh, a lot different than when we wrestled when we were a little younger. Um, but uh, now one injury timeout, second injury timeout, the other wrestler actually gets choice. This is our first wrestling match of the year coming up. The next big one will be coming up in a couple of weeks. It'll be Central Dauphin and Cumberland Valley in a gigantic mid pen Commonwealth Division battle. I'm normally officiating that match, and it's always went down to the wire. Exciting two powerhouses, uh, Central Pennsylvania constantly in, ranked in the top ten in the state of Pennsylvania. Maybe we could work out some night, George. We could put the headset on you, and you can be out there refing and commentating at the same time. What do well, you think? I, uh, I, I don't know if that's possible. I want to stay focused to make sure <laughs> I never shortchange the kids. 50 seconds to go at 160 pounds. Simmons was in control from the opening couple of seconds. He's in very tight again. He earned two points again. 10-3, one point away from uh, trying to earn an additional bonus point. 34 seconds on the clock to do it. He's actually going to let um, Troy Spencer up in an attempt to try to earn a takedown in the last 34 seconds to earn one additional team point. This would be the trade-off we talked about earlier. You give up one to get two. And in this to case, stretch your advantage. You're attempting to try to earn a takedown to earn one more team point. The difference between a decision and a major decision is three team points for a decision, four for a major decision. Final 20 seconds. He needs two points to do it. He's straight up not in a very good position to score here. His head buried in the mat, six, five, four. Looks like Troy Spencer is gonna be able to hold him off, but a decision for Michael Simmons from Middletown, 10 to six. Simmons wins it at 160 by a score of 10 to four. We'll be back with more action from Lower Dauphin right after this. Got old electronics, such as a TV or computer to recycle? We've got your answer at the Dauphin County Recycling Center. E-cycling is quick, easy, and free for all county residents. You can also recycle old major appliances and other items safely at our center. Have questions? Call our helpful staff at the Recycling Center or check our website for more information. Recycling is now more convenient than ever. Join us in going green to protect our environment. Keep our earth clean and green. Wipe out waste and recycle. Getting ready for action at 170 pounds. Middletown with a 10-point lead over Lower Dauphin. It's 17 to 7. Final score with that one. 10 to 6. One hundred seventy pounds. It's Ryan Gelnet of Lower Dauphin. Middletown wrestler in, earned two and now earning back points. He's earned at least three back points. Staying in bounds. Now he's out of bounds. Five nothing. Five nothing at 170 here. It's Ryan Gelnet of Lower Dauphin with that five nothing lead. No, we actually have Middletown in the lead. Okay, our apologies, that 160 pound match was actually Steve Kane of Middletown, not Michael Simmons. This is Michael Simmons now on the mat at 170. 
bit confusion there. It, it, it's confusing uh, because folks weigh in at multiple weights and uh, they can bump up. Uh, they can wrestle the weight class that they're at or one above. And in this case, there's a couple of forfeits that Middletown has and they're trying to bump the wrestlers up. So we'd ask that the audience at home bear with us until we identify the right name of the wrestler um, as uh, the coach is trying to make some strategic moves to cover uh, some of the bare spots in the lineup. And wrestling is a great spectator sport, but unfortunately for the spectators, the athletes don't have numbers on their back, yeah. and it's hard to identify who they are. Or a name. That would be helpful for us. Okay, so it's Simmons with a 5 nothing lead over Ryan Gelnet at 170 pounds. After one period. As we get ready to start the second period, Todd McCall has our winner at 160 pounds. Todd? I'm here with Stephen Kane. Stephen, 10-5 uh, decision. Can you talk a little bit about the technique you had to use to, to pull away tonight? I just had to go with the coaches told me. Just pretty much couldn't muscle him. He's pretty strong. Just had to do the simple moves that I learned and everything. Well, let me ask you this. In your league, the, the league and the conference keeps getting better. I mean, where are some areas that your team will have to really, you know, come to play? What's the forecast for this division? Well, we have a pretty tough division, but our team, we're, we're real young. We only have like, a couple of seniors, but we should be looking good this year. Can I ask one? I'm sorry. Can I ask you one word uh, to sum up what you want to do in the next two, next three years? Next three years, states. States. You keep hearing it night in, night out, or guy after guy. It's all about qualifying for the state someday, gentlemen. I think it doesn't matter what the sport is, whether it's wrestling or basketball or football or cross country or swimming. Uh, that's the ultimate goal, get to the state championships. And in the PIAA, when you earn a spot, uh, 16 wrestlers earn a spot to the state finals. Uh, and uh, when you earn a spot in the state finals, uh, the state championships in Pennsylvania, uh, you really have uh, certainly up the level of quality of wrestling, as you heard from several folks. Uh, Pennsylvania, one of the best states in the entire nation for wrestling. No NCAA championship event has ever been held without a, a wrestler from Pennsylvania. Uh, Penn State University now um, with a uh, Kale Sanderson as the coach have moved uh, to the number, they finished for the first time number one in the nation last year, uh, recruiting the kids that they lost oftentimes from Pennsylvania to being a core part of their team. Uh, Pennsylvania wrestling is uh, one of the highest quality wrestling anywhere in the nation and right here in central Pennsylvania uh, is no different. Um, we, we certainly have placed wrestling on the map and the quality and the level of wrestling here is uh, second to none. Well said. Final 20 seconds of the second period. Michael Simmons of Middletown leading Ryan Gelnet of Lower Dauphin by a score of seven to one. Middletown leading the team score, 17-7. 10 seconds to go in the second period. <laughs> Michael Simmons. He looks like he's uh, turning back in and attempting to grab a Peterson there rolled back in to earn two points and establish control there. So at 170 pounds, third period is getting ready to get underway. And stay tuned, coming up later on, we will have our Hoffman Ford wrestler of the match. And if you friend us on Facebook, you could also take part in voting for the wrestler of the match. So why don't you log on and get that done right now. Vote for your favorite wrestler. We'll have that uh, result coming up a little bit later. Michael Simmons still in clear control here, working a one-on-one. -on -one. Arms underneath, he looks like he's gonna put a leg in. Attempt to turn here at a power half. Tell you when you grind that power half in with a leg, uh, the taste of the mat is not too great. Yeah, hopefully it's a, a, a taste you don't get used to. Uh, it, it, it certainly, uh, if, if you do get used to it, I don't think you'll stay out too long. <laughs> Difficult sport. 
Minute 20 to go. Third period, 170 pounds. Again, Michael Simmons trying to get the leg in. Attempting again to work a power half. He's got hips buried down in the mat. Attempting to get underneath the arm to work a power half where you use leverage and then you attempt to try to turn the guy with, with uh, double legs in over the top. He's trying to work his head. In these positions, you see somebody get turned or um, as you can see, his arm being stretched out over his head, sometimes potentially dangerous. You want to bump him to his hip, figure out a way to expose his back and his angle to try to get a, at least a two count to earn two additional points. Again, separated by six points here. Two more points would earn some bonus for uh, Michael Simmons. Again, double boots in over the top, trying to work the power half. Looks like he's trying to get frustrated. And that's going to do it at 170 pounds. Michael Simmons of Middletown, a 7-1 winner at 170. We'll be back with more action from Lower Dauphin right after this. All-state freshman Malia Tate DeFridas tore her ACL in a heated state playoff, and her dreams seemed shattered. I tried to come back in, and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic, Malia is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal, and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. Getting ready for a match at 182 pounds, Middletown on top of Lower Dauphin by a score of 20 to seven. So at 182, it's Jeremy Bales of Middletown in the yellow. David Wiesner David for Lower Dauphin. David Wiesner from Lower Dauphin. To give a special plug, David uh, David Wiesner's father is behind me. He's a fellow wrestling official uh, and one our, our uh, chapter rules uh, interpreter um, and also here an administrator at Lower Dauphin High School. Anything surprise you so far tonight, George? You know, I, I think it's been a, um, a consistent and steady match. Uh, Middletown hasn't put themselves in a position to um, to lose any points. They've not gained a significant amount of bonus points. LD still hanging around. I mean, figured you talk about a pin, it could be a six-point swing, but it appears that uh, Middletown wrestlers seem to be about five or six points better than the other wrestlers uh, almost in any given weight class so far, with the exception of LD's two victories. After the first four matches, I mean, we were tied at two matches each, and it was 8-7 on the scoreboard. Since then, Middletown has run off the last four decisions, scoring the last uh, 12 team points to open up a 20-7 uh, advantage. Just like every other sport, you get some momentum, and uh, it appears that the momentum is on Middletown's side right now. And um, Jeremy Bales came out and scored two and now remains in control with about 45 seconds to go over David Wiesner from Lower Dauphin. Trying to work a uh, cradle here. Trying to work a near side cradle. Trying to stand underneath both arms to establish control. Out of bounds with 23 seconds to go on the clock. Got two nothing Jeremy Bales from Middletown over David Wiesner. Referee's position, Dave Wiesner tried to sit out, tried to hit a switch, get his arm between the body and attempt to uh, snatch the leg of Jeremy Bales. 11 seconds to go. Bales is trying to get the arm off of his leg and actually work a uh, cradle at the same time, attempting to try to earn exposure, but it looks like he's gonna run out of time. 
And that brings us to the end of the first period. Jeremy Bales of Middletown with a 2-0 lead over Dave Wiesner of Lower Dauphin. The end of every period, again, the um, odd or even wrestler gets a chance to make a selection. They have four choices, top, bottom, neutral, or they could defer. Uh, and if they defer, the other wrestler gets a chance to select three positions. And in this case, Jeremy Bales selected the bottom position, and he's now working to get out and escape. He's now earned a one-point escape, and they are on their feet uh, with a three-to-nothing lead. Three-nothing lead, a minute 40 to go in the second period. And while this action is going on, Todd has our winner at 170 pounds. Todd? I'm here with Mikey Simmons. Mikey, Coach Norman talked to me about one thing, about you being a leader of this team. Talk a little bit about how you do that night in, night out. Uh, it's a lot of work, because not only do I got to take care of myself and my own weight, I got to make sure our team is on top of it, working hard, make sure they're not stupid about their weight. And so, just got to keep control of it, kind of like a parent. Well, we're on High School Sports Live, and behind you is all your, your, your fans here. What can you say about them tonight? Uh, they're great out here. It's an away match, and there's still plenty of them here, and I love to see it. It's a big motivation out there when you hear them cheering for you. It's a lot of fun. Are you ready to take on anybody in that conference right now? Uh, definitely. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> As you heard, gentlemen, Mikey Simmons is ready, and so is the crowd behind you tonight. Thank you, Mikey. Yeah. That young man has a lot of confidence, and I guess, George, you really need a lot of confidence to, Absolutely. to, to take part in this kind of sport. Yep, just with that confidence, we have Jeremy Bales jump over the top and uh, put on a cradle, uh, turn two takedown, and now he's going to earn bonus points. It looks like he's earned three back points with 30 seconds to go. He'll be taking an, at least an 8 nothing lead, attempting to try to secure a fall, which he did, our first fall of the evening. 21 seconds to go in the second period. Um, that'll be a six points for Middletown uh, to extend their lead to 26 to seven. First pin of the evening at 182. We'll be back with more action right after this. Look into the sun for coverage of student athletes from Palmyra, Hershey and Lower Dolphin. Drew Weedman and the Sun staff are dedicated to weekly coverage. Extra, extra, read all about West Shore student and team success with the growing popularity of the Carlisle Sentinel, the pace setter in Carlisle and West Shore Sports Review. Patriot News has covered the region of Harrisburg since 1854. From all-star selections to championship reporting, the leader in central Pennsylvania sports news. Back to Lower Dauphin, we just had our first fall of the night at 182 pounds, Middletown's Jeremy Bales with the fall with 21 seconds left in the opening period over Dave, or uh, second period over Dave Wiesner of Lower Dauphin. We now have a forfeit um, at, um, at 195, 195 um, to uh, Lower Dauphin. That was the one space in the lineup that, uh, that, that was a forfeit. We're gonna roll right into uh, 220 here. We're rolling right into 220. With the score 26 to 13. At 2:20. We have Ryan Traficani of Middletown taking on Travis Morrill from Lower Dauphin. And this is, uh, this is a big match for Lower Dauphin here. They really need uh, um, some bonus points here to try to get themselves back into this match. Uh, just as I say that, uh, Travis Morrill earns two takedown with a shrug throw by.
the attempt to earn uh, some bonus points and a victory here to, to try to get a little bit of momentum back. Right now, uh, Middletown has a commanding 26 to 13 lead. Under a minute to go, opening period at 220 pounds. Again, for those of you just tuning in, uh, you may see 220 and say, what the heck's happening? We didn't know 220 was a weight class. Uh, weight class changed this year uh, through all the weight classes. Um, a uh, One of the biggest rule changes uh, throughout the year, and uh, you're going to have to get used to uh, to the weights. Um, you you want to run them down, John? Well, 220 last year, I guess, would have been about 215. That's correct. correct. Right. Okay. Yep. And uh, instead of 103, we're starting out at 106, 106. now. So. Sports fans, remember to go to the High School Sports Live Facebook page and like our page. Uh, you'll find photos, video clips, and games, um, the match schedules, as well as have a chance to vote for the wrestler of the evening. Um, we'd encourage you to get to the Facebook page, uh, High School Sports Live. Closing seconds of the opening period at 2.20. Ryan Trapicani of Middletown trails Travis Morrill of Lower Dauphin. By a count of two to one. And it's gonna stay two to one as we go to the second period. Travis Morrell with the choice. He deferred. Traffic Canny from Middletown selects the bottom position. You mentioned about vote for the wrestler of the match, and uh, our Todd McCall is with uh, perhaps the leading candidate for that uh, honor tonight right now. Todd? I'm here with Jeremy Bells. Jeremy, you guys, a lot of strategy tonight. You had to bump up, but, you know, you got the first pin of the night. Talk about the move you used. Uh, it was basic cradle. Uh, the dude stood up. It's uh, stuff we went over a lot with Coach, Coach Griff, Coach Mike, huge in our part. Uh, Cradle just putting him to his back, kind of trying to get that bonus because that's going to be huge for us later on. Uh, we got real faith in our wrestlers le left out. It's a real exciting match tonight. Jeremy, we were talking off camera, and I just want to mention, you know, wrestling has been a, a great community sport, but to be on TV, what does that mean? You talked a little bit about it deserves this light. Yeah, for so long people have just written off wrestling as just two guys rolling around, but uh, it's, it's so much more technical, so much more strategy involved than what everybody gives it credit for. And the fact that we have four this year and 11 next year is real exciting stuff to get the, the sports and publicity that it deserves. Yeah. Well, that's what we, High School Sports Live is trying Absolutely. to bring. I'm mean, here with Jeremy Bales, the first pin of the night. And uh, guys, as you can hear, he was very excited to get the opportunity to do this and do it on TV. And this is just the first of four scheduled matches that we're going to be bringing your way on High School Sports Live. The next one will be coming up in a couple of weeks after the new year. It's going to be Central Dauphin at Cumberland Valley. That'll be coming up on January 5th. Right now we're at 220 pounds. We come up to about the one-minute mark of the second period, about the halfway point. And it is Travis Morrill of Lower Dauphin leading Ryan Trafficani by a count of 4-2. to two. Yeah, Travis uh, had... Uh Opportunity to really control the head there. Um, moved the head to a position, jammed him down, and spun behind for, uh, uh, for, for two to be able to pick up a two-point lead, as I suggested. Lower it often needs to pick up a win here to try to stay in the match. Number of matches winding down. They need every point they can get. Under a minute to go in the second period. Morrill still leading four to two. He's trying to uh, work a one-on-one, -on -one. now a power half. He's jumping out to the side. Uh, top guy's really working to attempt to earn some bonus points here. Again, he's broken him down. So working a half, he's jumping out to the side. He's, uh, he's attempting to turn him here. He wants to take his time, try to settle himself back in. Work out to the side. Um, it uh, appears that um, uh, Travis Morrell must have uh, put in um, 
uh, a, a full Nelson, uh, which is illegal in the sport of wrestling. You can't come up from both sides and touch the back of the head. I uh, couldn't see from this angle, but uh, I, I certainly did hear the shouts from the Middletown bench and um, a, uh, a, a correlating call from our official tonight uh, who was right on top of it. And again, that, um, that is one penalty point uh, to make the match uh, uh, one closer. That uh, illegal hold um, uh, is a, a penalty point earns one for uh, the affected wrestler. In this case, it draws the match close to four to three. We head to the third period. Let's take another look at this one again. Again, pulled down head control. Pulled his head to the body the entire time he was working to try to turn around. Morrill on top, four to three, but his team trails on the big scoreboard by a score of 26 to 13. So we're in the third period at 220 pounds. Five, three, a minute 30. Travis Morrill in control. Attempting to earn a takedown. He's got to be careful here. You don't want to extend yourself and put yourself in a position to actually lose to. He looks like, uh, I venture to say, I don't know, but uh, he looks like a football player. He's built extremely well and probably uh, coming off the uh, football field for the Dolphins. Lower Dolphin uh, Falcons. It's a picture of... Mike Nauman there, the head coach of Middletown. Both guys uh, working hard to try to earn control here. Two would um, definitely put the match in strong control for uh, Lower Dolphin, and Middletown earns it, so they'll even it up at 5-5. Five -five. Thirty seconds to go. Still five three. Nineteen back, seconds. Move back to center. This is going to end up in a stalemate. You want to try that, call that quickly with a few seconds on the clock to get them back on their feet to try to have somebody earn a victory or to, to wrestle it out and not just lay there. That'll seal it up right there with two points for Travis Morrill. He's going to earn a 7-3 victory for Lower Dolphin. We're rapidly approaching the finish of tonight's match. And we'll be back with more action right after this. Hello, can I help you? Oh, no need to worry, Mrs. Smith. My grandfather is Russ Baylor himself and has been in business for over 30 years. At Russ's Auto and Trailer Sales, we have it all. We specialize in selling a complete line of trailers, a variety of used cars and campers. Our service department can do it all. And we even have a nice guy named Justin who answers the phone. And what do we tell him, Maddie? Nobody fusses at Ross's. Three matches to go here at Lower Dauphin, but the Falcons, the home team, trailing by 10 points on the scoreboard. It's going to take a Herculean effort in these last three matches if they're <coughs> going to pull this one out over the visitors from Middletown. Blue Raiders on top by a score of 26 to 16. So we're getting ready to do battle at 285. And at 285, it's Mitch Ward of Middletown taking on Zach Smith of Lower Dauphin. I'll tell you, the heavyweight category, it's always exciting. Um, normally, uh, you'll, you'll get some sort of excitement when once they get to uh, the back. It can end up in bonus points. Um, a pin here for Lower Dauphin will put them within 
four points and uh, make it a match. And just as I say it, you say it, here we go. Goes to his back. It might be. Zach Smith has it tight in here, and once you're having all that weight for is. a pin, for lower it off, and Zach Smith records a pin at, at 39, um, seconds. 39 seconds of the first period. Take a look at the replay on this. Take down to work in an underhook situation. Eases back into chest to chest and earns the pin here. So Zach Smith with the pin at 285, and we'll be back with more right after this. For generations, Caterpillar has delivered innovative products that help customers build strong, profitable businesses. And for more than 60 years, Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company has been Pennsylvania's source for first-class Caterpillar equipment, service, parts, and rentals. With 26 locations across Pennsylvania, we've grown right alongside our customers, delivering on our commitment to provide a superior experience and maximum value. Cleveland Brothers Equipment Company, helping Pennsylvania prosper since 1948. Back at Lower Dauphin, two matches to go, and we do have a match. What looked like a runaway earlier is now down to a four-point uh, difference on the scoreboard. Middletown leads at 26-22. As we flip the scales around, we go from the big boys down to the little guys, 106 pounds. Middletown is going to be Todd Hauser at 106. And for Lower Dauphin, Jordan Foreman. This match always comes down the stretch. Um, two years ago being decided by criteria, a tied match. Um, again, shaping up here after that pin to, uh, to potentially be a barn burner. The crowd is on the edge of their seats, and uh, this match is going to play a pivotal role in the outcome of this overall match. Todd Hauser has an arm bar in. He's trying to work an arm bar. Jordan Foreman stands up, turns in, attempting to escape. He's got to be very careful here. Now working an arm bar, Todd Hauser working an arm bar. This year, uh, net point of emphasis, when you'd run an arm bar before and get the individual uh, defensive wrestler under criteria, you were able to apply a figure four on the head. No longer is a figure four legal. Figure four being illegal now from everywhere. No longer can it be applied in criteria. Just over a minute gone, opening period at 106 pounds. Lower Dauphin trails by four on the scoreboard. They need to come up big in these last two matches. But right now it's Todd Hauser of Middletown on top of Jordan Foreman of the Falcons. 2-0 as we have 40 seconds to go in the Todd opening Hauser. period. He, he's, he's trying to work a tilt here. He's got a, um, a bar in one side, and uh, he's got the uh, wrist underneath. He's attempting to use the momentum, and the key is he needs to c catch his leg, he, as he's done there, in order to keep him criteria for at least two seconds, which he's done to earn at least two back points. So we've got uh, at least two back points being earned there. Todd Hauser takes a four to one lead. Now an escape for Jordan Foreman. Eight seconds to go. Four to one. Okay, one period down, two more to go. Let's go to Todd with an interview of our winner at uh, 285. Or 220, I'm Standing sorry, alongside Todd. Travis Morrell in Travis. The match got really close, went 3-2. A big decision right here. You went under hook and, and held on. Talk a little bit about it because it was a game changer. Yeah, well, I just looked at him in the, in the wrestling room actually this week, and I uh, got it, and you under hook it. You're supposed to grab both of them, take that on the map, but too bad I was out side of the line. You know, I couldn't get it. We'll talk a little bit right after that win. Zach Smith comes on and pins, and now the team's right back where they want it. What do you see the, the uh, closing? Uh, partaking here, the events happening here in the last 130. Well, uh, if we can hold him here to at least a decision, if not, we can win this and move back, get, get back into this match, you know? That's right. Yeah. And uh, I need to get that necessary pin to get us up in there, but I couldn't get that, so I feel disappointed in myself, so. Well, he feels a little disappointed, guys, but Travis did come back with the victory. 
Okay, thanks, Todd. 124 to go, second period at 106. And Todd Hauser of Middletown leading Jordan Foreman of Lower Dauphin by a score of 4 to 1. Four point margin for the Blue Raiders on the big scoreboard. They lead the Falcons 26 22. Jordan Foreman about to earn an escape. 4 to 2. Uh, we got a referee's timeout there. The headgear came over the eyes of uh, Todd Hauser. Four two. Uh, it's anybody's match here. A shot by Jordan Foreman, and then a reshot by Todd Hauser to earn two. And uh, he's attempting to uh, turn him right to his back to earn back points, which he's done to earn at least two. He's in criteria. It looks like it may be close here. Trying to earn a fall. Instead, it um, appears that he's earned three back three points. points there. 9-2 advantage now in favor of Hauser. So we hit the 30-second mark of the second period. That was a big move there, John, uh, to be able to get that takedown after um, um, bringing a close 4-2 there and earn the additional back points to uh, take a 9-2 lead, which, uh, depending upon the number of points that he scores here, could put the match out of reach uh, for Lower Dolphin. Final five seconds in the second period. And Middletown's Todd Hauser is going to take a 9-2 lead into the third period at 106 pounds. Again, I'd like to take an opportunity. Uh, you heard from the wrestlers tonight how excited they are about the opportunity for exposure. First time we're bringing live matches here. Uh, thanks to Arlington Orthopedics, uh, United Concordia, Dauphin County, Hummelstown Sun, uh, Hoffman, Ford, uh, and um, we want to thank all the sponsors who have made this possible. Big goings on right now. Is Jordan Foreman making a strong move? Got him in a headlock here. Minute 40 to go. But close to the out of bounds line, and I don't think he's going to earn any back points, but did earn two takedowns. So that's going to tighten things up a bit. It's now nine or ten to four. And uh, Middletown wrestler asking for injury time looked a little bit dazed after being put in a headlock. Headlock right there took him over the hip. Was able to uh, keep his feet planted while the uh, defensive wrestler remained in bounds. Uh, tried to keep it. Uh, looks like a legal headlock there above uh, the elbow. He's trying to squeeze it there tight to earn back points. And it's a great job by Todd Hauser trying to keep it square and stay off his back there and any to give up any additional points. Yeah, big minute 33 left here in this one. Uh, a win by Middletown clinches it tonight for the Blue Raiders. Next high school sports live telecast coming your way next Wednesday. It's a basketball game, boys variety, Hershey at Cedar Cliff. Huge battle in mid pen Keystone. That'll be next Wednesday at 7.30. Next wrestling telecast will be after the first of the year. Central Dolphin at Cumberland Valley. That'll be on January 5th. That will start at 7 o'clock on ABC 27.3. So mark your calendars. That's one you don't want to miss, folks. Minute 30 to go. 106 pounds. Middletown looking to clinch this match with Lower Dolphin. The Falcons looking to try to perhaps take it to the final match with a chance to win it. Todd Hauser of Middletown still on top, leading 10-4 over Jordan Foreman of Lower Dauphin. Literally, Jordan Foreman needs to win this match to, to be able to give uh, Lower Dauphin a chance. Um, 
any loss uh, would put them out of reach by at least one point in the final match. We have just under 50 seconds to go. Uh-oh. Foreman attacking. Gets two. It's now 11-6. Todd Hauser content with giving up two there, understanding what position he's in in the match, and not wanting to hang on too long uh, in order to put himself in a bad position. Maintaining an 11-6 victory. Jordan Tw Foreman chose to put him back on their feet to give up one. 28 seconds to go. Hauser still trying to be aggressive. Foreman needs to come up with a big move, and he needs to do it now. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen as we come down the final five seconds at 106 pounds. Middletown's Todd Hauser comes out victorious, 11-6 over Jordan Foreman. So as we get ready for our last match of the night, let's go to Todd McCall with a special interview. Todd. I'm here with uh, Drew Weidman of The Sun. Drew, The Sun has partnered up in the you know, Lower Dolphin community for years now. Talk a little bit about what you guys are trying to bring into high school sports. Um, well, we, we, we always cover a lot of sports in the community. And uh, you know, probably one of the, the biggest questions I get is, where can we get your paper? And people don't seem to know a lot about the Sun. And oh, I'm here to try to get the word out a little bit. You know, we cover you know the Lower Dolphin community. That doesn't mean the school district. That's you know the county, and that's mainly includes Hershey, Lower Dolphin, and Milton Hershey. You know, we're here tonight just to you know let people know that you know we're out there. And you know, if you see one of our reporters around, you know, feel free to talk to him. We're you know we have a lot of coverage, we have a lot of photos. We're photo-based paper, lots of pictures, and you know that's what's important to us. You guys have uh, made a decision to partner up with High School Sports Live. You're here at a wrestling match tonight, lowered off Middletown, an old rivalry. Was there surprises or not so surprised? What do you think the outcome of the match? Or what, what was the changer, you think? Um, well, to me, I mean, the change, the, 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 obviously what stands out in the match was the, the pin by Bales. Um, you know, I kind of, nothing really surprised me tonight. Uh, you know, Middletown and Lower Dolphin kind of are in the same spot as far as, uh, you know, they're going through a little bit of a, uh, you know, you know, change with uh, low, up, upperclassmen leaving and having to fill some shoes with younger, the younger wrestlers. But you know, overall, I'm not real surprised. Um, it's been a really competitive match here at the end, so you know, it's it's been good. Well, we uh, look forward to the partnership continuing, and thank you, Drew, and thank the Sun, Drew Weidman of the Sun. And just like that, that's going to do it at 113 pounds. It's Zach Ulrich of Middletown coming up with a pin at 39 seconds over Mike Gonzalez. So that puts the finishing touches on a Blue Raider victory tonight. Here is the end again at 113 pounds. Zach Ulrich with a pin at 39 seconds over Mike Gonzalez. And that's going to complete the action on the mat tonight. Stay tuned. We're going to come back with our wrap-up show and our wrestler of the match. You don't want to miss that, so stick stick around. We'll be back to Lower Dolphin High School right after this. High School Sports Live is brought to you by Hemp Brothers, paving the way in concrete, asphalt, crushed stone construction services, Keystone State Games, Pennsylvania's largest amateur athletic festival. NK Sporting Goods, partnered with NK Graphics, has been outfitting the teams of Central PA for over 25 years. United Concordia, ensuring America's dental health for over 40 years. Regen, muscle recovery beverage. Experience the raw power of natural cocoa. Groff, tractor and equipment, we're your number one source for everything under construction. Sun Motor Cars, come experience Central PA's ultimate driving headquarters. When my dad opened Hoffman Ford in 1953, this was the model that you could drive out of the showroom. In the past 59 years, yes, things have changed, but one thing still remains the same. There's always been a Ford and a Hoffman in our showroom. Through three generations, the Hoffman Ford family has believed in always treating their customers with the courtesy and respect that they deserve. 
passed on from our grandfather to our father and now to us. We believe these values will bring another 59 years of success. Bigger selection, better deals, Hoffman Ford. All-state freshman Malia Tate DeFridis tore her ACL in a heated state playoff and her dreams seemed shattered. I tried to come back in and it wasn't working out. I thought that my basketball career was over. Getting an assist from the doctors at Arlington Orthopedic, Malia is ready to attack the hoop this season. It feels good when I jump and cut and stuff. It feels normal and the brace really helps me. To go from tears to a smile, it was, it was, it was just a beautiful thing. Welcome back to Lower Dauphin High School for our Hoffman Ford Wrestler of the Match. And let's go to United Concordia Ports Game Show. Let's go to Todd McCall, who has our Wrestler of the Match. Todd? I'm here with Jeremy Bell, the Wrestler of the Night, the Wrestler of the Match. You know, it's the first time to do high school wrestling live, and you're the Wrestler of the Match. But it's the match that you did. It's the decision you got. Talk a little bit about tonight and what it meant to you. Uh, it was just a real exciting match uh, all the way up to it. And uh, when we bumped, we made that decision. I knew I had to uh, do something for the team, get some bonus points. And I feel like that right before my, or right after Mikey's match was a real turning point for the team, real uh, momentum shifter. And we, we just got out there, got some bonus, and it was real exciting for the team. You know, talk a little bit about, you know, you guys get back on the bus. You don't go very far. You get an opportunity to really celebrate a little bit tonight. This is a, an old rivalry, and, it, and it's a good win. Yeah, it's a huge win for us because if there's one thing we don't want to do during the year, it's lose to LD. Quite honestly, they're our rival. They have been for years and years and years, and they will continue to be. And uh, this, this win really means a lot for the team. It's going to be huge for our team. Yeah, we got to build off of it. But we can take tonight, tomorrow morning, and uh, just uh, look at it as a, a symbol of victory. So it's real exciting. I got to ask you one more question. Do you feel going into the conference, and it's not being overconfident, do you feel you can take on anyone at your weight or bump up or move in the conference? Yeah, I think if I put in the work, uh, get, listen to the coaches, coaches are going to take us to victory no matter what. And uh, put in the work and Chad. put in the hours, I think I have that ability, yeah. Well, you're the first player of high school wrestling live. Uh, it's something to remember for a long time. We wish you the best, thanks and it's so been an opportunity, a great opportunity to cover you tonight. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Well, we'll have more post-match. Uh, coming right up after these messages. AAU Spring Basketball with Advanced Hoops. 21 teams last year featuring the top boys basketball players from all over the region. Advanced Hoops AAU features 10 to 11 player rosters, guarantees playing time, all man-to-man -man style play, and every player gets professional skill training along with top quality AAU tournaments. Advanced Hoops has helped over 25 High school athletes get scholarships over the last two years. Amazing results. I call this AAU with the follow through. The Advanced Hoops program is a one-stop shop training program. The most talented players in the area are playing AAU Showcase in front of college coaches with Charlie Fortney. Players of all ages can train with Advanced Hoops and get a rock solid foundation. The coaches at Advanced Hoops have a great rapport with all the kids. Advanced Hoops is unique because we offer professional training in dribbling and point guard skills with Gerald Jarman, the point guard who led the greatest upset in NCAA history when the Richmond Spiders beat the Syracuse Orangemen. Gerald is a master at building confidence in point guards and ball handling skills to all age groups. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction is amazing. He has helped so many high level players get a great shooting foundation for the college level. He understands how to build a player's shot right from where they are. The spring 5-on-5 five five games registration is going on right now, and this in-house training has revolutionized the ability of players all over the region. Advanced Hoops is registering boys and girls from 5th to 12th grade for in-house 5-on-5 five five shooting and advanced dribbling. Advanced Hoops is celebrating 10 years of training youth in the Harrisburg region. In 2010, we trained over 1,000 youth from kindergarten to 12th grade. Our spring program is going to be amazing. So as I pass the ball, you make the call. To get any questions answered regarding our spring games, shooting, dribbling, or AAU opportunities. We specialize in making training look easy. And Charlie is not the only one that can shoot a basketball around here. Determined. Determined to go to the basket. Etherton down the lane. Spin move. Pump fake off the glass and in. 
John Taylor inside to Scott Etherton. Scott faces the basket. Turn around, move. Scott's going to put it up off the glass and in. Has he perfected that little jump hook, you know, on the right block as well as anybody we've seen? Block. Cam Ritter. Nice. Pass to Etherton. Etherton. And one. And it's good. Welcome back to Lower Dauphin High School and the United Concordia post-game show. Our first live telecast of high school wrestling for the season is in the books. And it was a pretty exciting one, George. Uh, Lower Dauphin in Middletown. Middletown coming out on top by a final of 35-22. to 22. And uh, it, it's, uh, Todd McCall was saying it's just a short drive back you know, for the guys from Middletown. But it's, it's going to be such a sweet ride for them on the way home, isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, it's interesting to see. I know both programs... Uh, share a significant number of underclassmen. Uh, a lot of um, b both sides were looking to see the level of uh, talent that they had tonight and how they'd match up with a rival school. Um, and, you know, it's a, I think it's a really awesome opportunity for these kids not only to come out tonight but uh, also to have live TV here. Um, as a former wrestler and knowing what that uh, means and, and the reputation that Central Pennsylvania wrestling has, uh, to be able to spotlight their talents, uh, young freshmen, sophomores, uh, who knows, we might have seen uh, one or two future state place winners out here tonight. And, um, you know, the atmosphere was great. I know the fans and the wrestlers were appreciative. And a backyard rivalry was able to be brought to folks in central Pennsylvania live for the first time in history. Yeah, just looking back on how things went, it was pretty even in the beginning. The, the, the two teams split the first four matches. Then Middletown went on a, a bit of a roll. They won five in a row with uh, our Hoffman uh, uh, Ford wrestler of the match, Jeremy Bales, coming up with a big pin at uh, 182 that actually gave his team a 26-7 lead. And then give Lower Dauphin credit because the Falcons came back and had a chance in those last two matches to possibly pull this one out. So from, a, from an excitement perspective, you really couldn't have asked for a better match for us to have for the very first time uh, on live TV. Absolutely. And I, for a concern for Middletown is they got a couple of bare spots there. Um, you know, the two forfeits really hurt. And it's a 12-point swing there for the other uh, team, whoever they're going to be able to wrestle this year. And they had to bump weights throughout. So for them to be able to maintain a lead, uh, I think the momentum changer was the uh, the heavyweight pin there um, and, and put uh, Lower Dolphin back in the match a little bit to, to encourage the crowd over the last two matches for excitement. Uh, but really, I think Middletown throughout the match maintained a level of control. I mean, almost invariably, uh, each wrestler won by between six to ten points there. Um, they look like uh, they, they were in relatively good condition for early in the year. And um, uh, I think both uh, Lower Dolphin and Middletown have some young talent that are going to make up a core nucleus uh, for uh, two proud uh, traditions and, and two proud um, high schools to, to be able to build on for the future. You talked about the bare spots. I think that's one of the joys of, of, of watching wrestling. Just like any other sport, you have to make in-game adjustments. If you just draw things up on paper, you can say, well, this team should beat that team. But sometimes coaches can play those little games. Put this guy here, move him in there. That's the little chess match that takes place once the, 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 the match actually gets underway. And that's what makes it so interesting. And, and the matchups um, from a broadcasting standpoint, standpoint it doesn't make our job easy because we don't know exactly what wrestler we're going to be announcing right. so we have to pull the earpiece away and and Try make sure we, we we hear who it is but uh, clearly both coaches um, uh, from Lower Dolphin and, and Middletown have a, a great deal of experience know how to create the appropriate matchups um, in this case, uh, Mike Nauman bumped his wrestlers up to try to fill up one of those uh, areas where they otherwise would have had a forfeit. Um, you know, posing those matchups and using a little uh, strategic moves, uh, which which really kept them uh, in the lead throughout the match and um, comfortably able to actually secure the victory towards the end. Okay, again, you're watching the United Concordia post game uh, report here from Lower Dauphin High School. Again, the uh uh, Middletown Blue Raiders coming out on top tonight over Lower Dolphin by a final score of 35 to 22. Great night for wrestling. Central Pennsylvania, backyard rivalries in Lower Dolphin County. And it's great for me because, you know, as an official, um, when I do an all Dolphin County match, I'm invariably, invariably going to lose some votes from one side or the <laughs> other. So it was much better to play a 
uh, a, a, a role that's a, a, of commentator tonight instead of wearing the pinstripes and um, uh, maybe creating a detractor or two. Okay, we're going to have to get out of here. They're kind of sweeping things up. So just a reminder, High School Sports Live, our next telecast is coming up next Wednesday night. That's Hershey at Cedar Cliff Boys Basketball. Uh, we'll be on the air on uh, ABC 27.3 at 7.30 for that one. The next wrestling match, we're going to take a couple of weeks off uh, and enjoy the holiday season. We'll come back at you after the first of the year. A big one in mid pen Commonwealth. It's going to be Central Dolphin at Cumberland Valley. That uh, the, the, the gym down there on, on Carlisle Pike is going to be rocking for that one. I tell you, I, I can't wait to see that one coming up in three weeks. That's one you don't want to miss. And so if you can't make it in person, we'll have it, all the action for you live right here on High School Sports Live. So that's going to wrap it up for uh, George Hartwick. I'm John Repitz. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next week for basketball and in a couple weeks for a uh, second night of wrestling on High School Sports Live on ABC 27.3. Happy holidays. Welcome to Up Close and Personal with Arlington Orthopedic. I'm Charlie Fortney and I'll be your host. Today I'm with Dr. Scott King. We're talking about understanding hip injuries. Dr. King has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of Maine. He also has a Doctor of Osteopathy at the University of New England College of Osteopathy. He was a professional hockey player for the Detroit Red Wings, 1990 to 1993. He did a fellowship at the Center for Hip and Knee Surgery in Indiana. He also attended the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. King's specialty is in hip and knee replacement. Dr. King, welcome to the show. Um, like many of the doctors at Arlington, you have a sports background. Yours in particular has, interests me and my neighbor, and that's uh, you played for the Red Wings. Talk about that experience. Well, first, I played college hockey at University of Maine, uh, which uh, was right in the time where we were building a, a very strong program, national program. I was a, a goalie there. And then uh, was drafted, actually, out of high school in, in Canada. and. Uh, got a chance to play three years with the Red Wings. In preparing for this interview, I, I realized myself that the hip area is such a unique concentration. You're one of the few doctors in this area that, that deal with this. Would that be accurate to say? Yeah, there's really, there's really only th uh, three of us that are doing hip arthroscopy surgery and, mm -hmm. and fixing labral repairs and, and trying to change the bony shape of the hip to try and prevent future problems and fix the problems that have occurred. Now in Arlington, um, you're the doctor that focuses mostly on this area. Um, do, you, do you find that you get a lot of patients that come in with problems in, in the hip area? I do, and, and you get a lot of patients who were me 20 years ago. Uh, I, I sort of relate to them right away, where they, they come in, they've had two or three or four or five years of hip pain and problems. They've just been sort of pushed around, not really sure what's going on. Do they have a hernia? Do they have mm -hmm. groin pulls? They tend to have a lot of the similar, uh, very similar complaints. And um, uh, so I, I do sort of have a kinship with them right away and have a history. And uh, I've seen enough of it now where the, the story ends up being very similar uh, every single time. The story that stands out to me uh, the most is uh, regarding hip injury is Bo Jackson. I mean, he was considered the um, multi-sport pro athlete and all of a sudden his career ended quickly with a hip injury. What was going on with Bo Jackson? Uh, what, what was he suffering from? Yeah, he had a little bit different situation. He had a traumatic injury where he had a, a dislocation of his hip mm. and lost the blood supply to his hip. So he had something called avascular necrosis where the, the blood supply 
uh, was lost, the bone died, and so he had to have a, a hip replacement. A little bit different situation with the hip arthroscopy world where we're trying to fix cartilage tears uh, and, and I, like I said, change the bony morphology. But the cartilage tears are very similar to what people know every day uh, about knee scopes. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows somebody who's had a knee scope and had a cartilage repair mm -hmm. of the knee scope. But it's just really starting to get hold in the orthopedic uh, world, especially in the United States. It really started over in Europe. Uh, the person who figured this all out was over in Europe. And so it's really only come to the States in the last 10 years. Now, my favorite player is Chase Utley. And, uh, he had some hip problems recently, and I, one of my enemies is Alex Rodriguez for the Yankees. Uh, he had some similar issues. Um, are, are those common injuries we're seeing in, in sports? Uh, now, these are baseball guys, but I'm assuming football's uh, doing this too. Yeah, again, anything that requires a sniff amount of rota rotational mm -hmm. torque on the hip can, can cause problems, whether it's the baseball swing like Utley and Rodriguez. Uh, uh, there's, there's countless number of football players, especially football linemen who have had it, mm -hmm. a lot of golfers, professional golfers, uh, and, and a number of different hockey players, uh, almost too numerous to count right now because the, the sports doctors that are taking care of these teams now are starting to understand it and, and hip arthroscopy has become very common. What's a common injury for um, just high school athletes or, or even a younger athlete or student that comes into your office? Uh, what do you find in what area of the hip are, are they getting affected the most? Well, you, you certainly want to rule out some of the very simple things first. Uh, physical therapy is always a cornerstone to try and see if there are weaknesses in certain muscles. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on core strength mm -hmm. right now. And so you certainly don't want to jump the gun and go right to everything as a, as a hip labral tear. There's, uh, there's the classic hip pointers, which mm -hmm. is really just bruises. There's certainly many different kinds of muscle pulls and tendon pulls. With uh, adolescent kids, there's, uh, you can get fractures around the hip where it, it pulls off growth plates. Mm -hmm. So there are many different uh, injuries. Uh, and, and that really just goes back to having an understanding of the hip and, and the, all the mechanics around it and, and just a good physical exam and history usually gets you mm -hmm. where you want to be. Hip pointers uh, seem to be a common uh, injury that occurs. Um, is this an injury that you can, uh, or a coach can just have an athlete just go back out on the field, tell them to suck it up, or is this one of those injuries that the that, that, that player should rest? Hip pointer is really not a problem. It's really just a bruise or, or okay. what we call a contusion. That's something where you can just, you know, play pat the it. kid on the back, play through it, go tough it out. The, the hip pathology with labral tears and cartilage tears in the hip is really something that's going to become a recurrent problem where mm. uh, the, the, the patient is just complaining game after game or month after month that something just doesn't feel right. And a lot of times they'll, they'll be able to tell you that something's clicking in right. the hip uh, even when they're not playing, even just rolling around in bed at night. Is there a difference between male and females when it comes to the, uh, the way the hips uh, are aligned uh, or the uh, percentage of injuries that happen between the male and the female athlete? Pincer impingement that is which the females tend to get. The hip bends up and pinches the labrum up against the uh, hmm. socket and tends to cause the labral tear. Now in a male, they tend to get a bump over the, the ball side of the hip. And that bump tends to come and go inside and injure the cartilage that wears out in arthritis. So male females tend to get a little bit different injury pattern to the cartilage inside their hip. As we talked earlier, Bo Jackson had to have a hip replacement. At what point do you, uh, does, a, does one of your patients uh, go from hip surgery to needing a hip replacement. Yeah, and there's a lot of studies being done on that right now, and uh, I use myself as an example a lot. I'm uh, a young 40s ex-athlete who is, by the time we figured out exactly what was going on, uh, was too far gone in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the cartilage damage that had gone on. And people are often shocked by that, that you could be too far gone in your 30s, mm -hmm. and you just have to wait for a hip replacement. And that's why people will uh, sometimes want to address this when you're in your 25, 30 range. Uh, so there is a lot of studies going on right now. And basically, if you're before 40, you've got a, a chance uh, uh, to fix, fix things and uh, fix things with a hip arthroscopy. When you're 40 to 50, you're kind of in, in a gray zone, uh, very patient dependent and depends right. a lot on the MRI. Once you get past 50 and you're having constant pain, 
you're probably going to be thinking more of replacement in general, but there's still a few people that are hip scope candidates at that age. On that note, is there anything someone in their early 20s, early 30s can be doing to possibly avoid getting into that situation? Any exercises or any recommended? You know, there's really not. It, 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 it just depends. If you are in one of uh, the at-risk categories in doing one of those activities that are more at risk, uh, and it's really what you're born with right. uh, that predisposes you to that. So there's really no exercises, no amount of core strength that we know about that is really going to change any of that uh, issue. With a lot of injuries, being overweight um, increases the chances of injury. Is that the same for the hip, or, or is that, or it doesn't, it doesn't matter? It really doesn't seem to have anything to do with weight. It really seems to be, again, the activity level that you place on it. So most of the patients that we actually end up doing hip arthroscopy on are, are very thin, muscular, athletic people, with the exception of the, the football linemen who put themselves in, in that uh, the down position right. on a daily basis and, and put their hips at risk. But other than that, it's really uh, just a multitude of, of very athletic thin people that are, are really just putting a lot of torque on their hips. As you know, bodybuilding is such a big thing nowadays. Um, could trying to squat too much weight uh, affect the hips and the joints? You know, you do see some of that, and that, that could be the only thing that might be technique related where people feel like they have to do squats with 400 pounds in their back and, you know, go all the way down to the bottom. So there was some of that uh, technique issue. Uh, even when I was training as a, as a goalie in, in Detroit, uh, the goalie coach was very much uh, into doing certain hip exercises that were developed by the Russians and they were, they were bad for your hips mm -hmm. if you were built the wrong way. Um, so there, there is some of that. Again, it's something you're predisposed with, but if the person who's doing that training doesn't have the education, they may just push you um, beyond what your hips can handle. There's probably some coaches watching who um, probably are going to wonder how to handle a, a, a hip injury. You know, you know, they might assume it's a hip pointer, but could be worse than that. What would you say to a coach who has a, a player that comes up and complains about uh, their side or hip hurting? Uh, it, it's that uh, age-old adage about listening. Mm -hmm. And uh, most athletes want to be out there. They want to be playing. They're not going to be complaining about chronic problems. They want to be out there competing. And so I would just listen and, and get them to see somebody who understands the hip mm. uh, and uh, can good, give them a good evaluation, whether that's a therapist or a physician. Dr. Scott King is an excellent orthopedic surgeon who does general orthopedics as well as joint replacements. He's had a specialty uh, fellowship uh, in uh, joint replacements, and he's one of the few uh, joint specialists in this area that has had that fellowship an excellent orthopedic surgeon. You know, Mike's uh, he's just a great person. He's been a great doctor in this area for a long time. He's meant a lot to Arlington and, and a lot to the, the Harrisburg uh, sports scene, so I have an immense amount of respect for him. Back to your hockey card. Um, do you have many of those hockey cards laying around? Do you, are, did you pass any of those on to your, to your six-year-old? I, I have uh, five or six laying around the house, so so they know it exists. It's a little bit of a funny story. The trainer sent them to me uh, with some money that he owed me. <laughs> uh, and, and surprisingly, it didn't make it. I don't think it was because of the hockey cards. But, uh, so I only got five or six. Now, uh, you apparently can find them out there on, on eBay, but uh, they're, they're not easy to find. Dr. King, thanks for being on the show. Now I understand the hip a lot more. Thank you very much.